Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. Hello and welcome to Autoline Daily. Coming up, we'll look at Tesla's big announcement. Later in the show, Chevy's chief marketing officer tells us how the brand is growing around the world. But first, we start with Ford and its issue with fuel economy ratings. In August of 2013, Ford lowered the fuel economy rating of the C-Max by 10% because it did not hit EPA ratings in the real world. But many people had the same complaint with the other battery-assisted vehicles in the automaker's lineup and now we know why. Ford just announced it had an error in its testing process and has lowered the fuel economy ratings on six models, including the C-Max again, which represents about 200,000 US vehicles. The other affected models include 2013 and 2014 Fusion and MKZ hybrids, 2013 and 2014 plug-in Fusion and C-Maxes, and most 2014 Fiestas. No other adjustments are planned, and Ford will offer lease customers and owners a goodwill payment based on the difference between the old and new ratings. I think it'll be interesting to see if this has a sales impact on these newly affected vehicles. As you may remember, back in April, Ford's Chief of the Americas, Joe Hendricks, said that C-Max sales were falling due to the initial drop in its fuel economy rating. Click the link in today's show notes to see how much the ratings were changed and how much customers will get back. As we've said in the past, Tesla CEO Elon Musk is on a mission to transform the auto industry, and yesterday he made a bold move to achieve that goal. The head of the EV maker says the company won't sue anyone who wants to use the company's technology as long as it's in good faith. In a blog post on the company's website, Musk says that he hopes that by making Tesla's patents available to anyone, it will spark EV growth around the world. But remember that Tesla is planning to build the world's largest battery factory, so this also seems like a good way to make sure all those batteries get used. And speaking of Tesla, Reuters reports that executives from both the EV maker and BMW met earlier this week to discuss how to get more interest in electric cars and how to better use Tesla's network of charging stations. BMW isn't the only German automaker to collaborate with Tesla, Daimler holds just over a 4% stake in the company and also uses Tesla's batteries and motors in the electric versions of the Mercedes B-Class and the Smart 4.2. We can argue all day long over whether or not humans are causing global warming, but one thing is for sure, man do cars produce a lot of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is formed when two oxygen atoms join to a carbon atom. Bonding them together adds weight and volume so CO2 actually takes up more room and weighs more than the gasoline it started with. Get this, a gallon of gasoline weighs six pounds, but when you burn that gallon in an engine, it releases 19 pounds of CO2. Over a year, a car produces five tons of CO2, which is more than it weighs. I mention this because it's so counterintuitive. We typically don't think about the mass of the gas coming out of the tailpipe, I mean, who ever thought that burning a six pound gallon of gasoline would translate into 19 pounds of CO2? Hanergy is a Beijing based energy company that's best known for its solar panels made for buildings. But now it's exploring where else it can use these panels and is teamed with Aston Martin Racing for help. In the racing world, FIA regulations stipulate that GT cars must have some kind of air conditioning system to keep the cockpit temperatures down. Running the system results in some performance loss, so this is where Hanergy thinks its thin, lightweight, and flexible panels will really come in handy. And what better place to test them than in extreme racing conditions? The technology could be used on Aston Martin's Vantage for the GT3 and GT4 classes once the cars are developed. You know, I kind of wonder if Hanergy ever contacted the folks over in the Formula E series, because that seems like it would be a match made in energy heaven. Sales of big trucks in the U.S. are continuing their surge. Through the first five months of the year, sales of medium and heavy-duty trucks are up over 12.5% compared to last year. 
In fact, they posted their best May sales total since 2006 with deliveries of over 33,000 units, which is an increase of 5.6%. May actually marked the ninth consecutive month of year-over-year -year increases. Coming up, a look at how much Chevy is growing outside of the U.S. Here's another great thing about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. A comfortable, quiet ride. Oh. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. Chevrolet is pretty much known as just an American brand, but over the last decade the company has expanded beyond the U.S. and into other markets worldwide. Tim Mahoney, the Chief Marketing Officer for Global Chevrolet, and our guest on AutoLine this week, explains how important the global market is to the brand now. Globally, we are the fourth largest car brand. Um, and, and I think a lot of people perhaps in the U.S. can't imagine that. Uh, if you go back to 2002, um, 2003, so just about 10 years ago, um, over 60%, somewhere in the mid-60s, 60% 60 range, of the vehicles, uh, Chevrolet vehicles, were sold in the, in, in the U.S. and North America. Um, that is completely inverted now uh, to the point where th the growth is really outside the U.S. Um, China is coming on strong. Um, China actually, much to the chagrin of our friends in Brazil, surpassed uh, them as the second largest market. And I have to be honest, I'm not sure that they'll ever catch them again, given the growth that's going on in China. But it, it, but it is a brand that in some ways is new around the world, uh, but is, is, is growing very quickly. Uh, and so um, it's, it's, it's fascinating when you see the markets um, where, where we are penetrating. Uh, and, and for me, it's encouraging because Find New Roads is resonating around that world. So we, we, we've got the growth there and we, we actually have the positioning. If you want to learn more about Chevrolet and how it plans to attract new customers around the globe, you can watch that entire interview right now on our website, autoline.tv. That's it for today's show. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.